So we are back for our panel number two, which is the future black leadership and the black agenda. Uh, before we start, I do want to say one of our fraternities of, of course, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated national program is a voteless people is a hopeless people. And so on that note, let me introduce our co-moderators. The first co-moderator is David Campagna. He is the current committee chair of the Voteless People is a Hopeless People Committee. Professionally, Brother Campagna is the vice president and digital strategy lead for Investors Bank, where he leads the organizational strategy for all online digital customer technologies. As a 25 year professional and executive, Brother Campagna has worked for various industries, including investment banking, telecommunications, financial services, pharmaceuticals, and music. He's a father of four sons and enjoys reading, playing golf, and staying home. Brother Campagna, welcome. Thank you. Our other co-moderator is Brother Aaron Jones, and he's a graduate of Rutgers University, Newark, with a master's in criminal justice. He serves as committee chair for both the Middlesex County College's DEI Advisory Council and Rutgers University, Newark School of Criminal Justice, DEI Committee. He is the chapter's co-chair of the Social Action Committee, and he's also the current Social Action Chair for the New Jersey Association of Alpha Phi Alpha Chapters. Brother Jones currently is an analyst with Goldman Sachs. Welcome, Brother Jones. Brother Thank Jones and Brother Campagna, the floor is yours. Perfect. So uh, I'm going to first let everybody know if you have any questions, please fill them in Facebook Live or YouTube. Uh, we will try our best to answer them at the end of the discussion. Uh, but I would like to tell you what we're talking about. Uh, so one of the hallmarks of the black community is our charismatic, passionate, and dynamic leaders. From Harriet Tubman to Frederick Douglass to Barack Obama. Uh, some may say we have moved from an era of clearly defined black leadership, like Brother Martin Luther King Jr., excuse me, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Brother Whitney Young Jr., Malcolm X, Medgar Evers. And while we can argue the tactical advantage of this or the trauma of losing our leaders to violence, uh, our world has changed. And our current era is defined by a myriad of opinions and activism all of which one can easily determine to be valid or invalid. Uh, in the journey to uplift and empower our community, the black community, this discussion today is our method to find a consensus through collaboration. And if I can be frank, I am very excited for this discussion. Uh, our panelists are black leaders who I believe represent and fight for ideals to promote the best for the entire African diaspora. Today, in this moment, we are going to have a meaningful and fruitful discussion on our current black leaders and the black agenda through the lens of what we must do next. Uh, and I'd definitely like to pass the, the mic to Brother Campania. Uh, please go. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Jones. This is a really, really unique time for us. We're, we're you know, going through a pandemic uh, it was a, a, a fairly traumatic four years. Um, everything between, you know, Michael, uh, George Floyd. The world is seems like it's going out of control, and it's and it's and it's uh, and you want to sometimes be pessimistic about things, but every day is a new day, and and, and we turn the page. We've made history where we have a sister, a black woman, as the as the vice president of the United States. There is hope. We've had a black president. There is hope. But that hope actually starts here. It starts here in the local communities where we now have to start thinking about who are going to be the next Barack Obamas, who's going to be the next Raz Baraka, who's going to be the next Cory Booker, who's going to be the next Kamala Harris. What we need to start thinking about is building the next generation of leaders. What is our agenda? for the next 100 years. Since we already started with a deficit of 400, how can we now continue to build on this momentum? That's what we wanna talk about tonight. 
let's see what we're going to do as the community to build our community, to build our country. With that, we have four very dynamic gentlemen, brothers of Alpha. They're gonna share their insights, talk about where they see black leadership and where they see the black agenda going. And Brother Jones, if you don't mind, I'll start with the first two introductions and then you'll go to the other two. Great. Mm -hmm. Let me first introduce Brother Michael Blake. Brother Blake is the founder and CEO of Atlantis Strategy Group, which focuses on economic empowerment through increasing access to capital, contracting and opportunities to minority women and small businesses, along with creating a, metric, a metrics-based program for social, social justice and civic engagement for communities of color. Blake has worked with the Washington football team, Next Level Sports and Entertainment, Echelon, MWW, the National, De the National Demographic Training Committee, Aquasite, Operation Hope, focusing on liter financial literacy for individuals and businesses, and Green for All as its national policy director. Brother Blake, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Brother Campana. I appreciate you. And good to see the brothers 06. No problem, no problem. I have another brother. Brother Larry Scott Blackman is an extremely active and individual member of the community. Professionally, Larry, or LSB as he likes to be known, is the CEO of Blackman, Blackman Organization, a full, a full service government affairs, public relations, lobbying, and entertainment firm. Larry represents clients who, who wish to know New York City's influencers, power brokers, and community leaders. Prior to starting his firm, Larry served as the Vice President of Public Affairs at Fresh Direct, the, the leading e-commerce grocer of the Northeast. Brother Blackman, thank you for your time and welcome. Thank you, and it's great to be around my brothers. Thank you, Brother And thank you to the brothers of Alpha Alpha Lambda for having me. Thank you. Brother Jones? Perfect. Uh, so the first brother that I'm going to introduce is extremely dynamic, uh, Brother Pascal Robert. He is an essayist and a political commentator who works, whose work covers Black politics, global affairs, and Haitian politics, something that's very close to my heart. Uh, his work has appeared in The Washington Spectator, Black Commentator, Alternet, AllHipHop.com, and The Huffington Post. He's a regular contributor to the online publication, The Black Agenda Report, and is a current co-host of the This Is Revolution podcast, which is live streamed via YouTube and relevant social media on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Saturdays at noon. Brother Robert, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much, my brothers. Very, very happy to be on this panel with the Brothers of Alpha. And up next, we have Wilbert, or Will Davis. Uh, he is a 2020 alumni of Hofstra University who double majored in journalism and political science. Uh, in the year after his graduation, uh, he also helped start Liberation Elevation Education <coughs> Book Club Incorporated with two other Hofstra alumni. Uh, the focus of this 501c, 501c3 is striving to promote knowledge through black literature and black and brown in around communities. Thank you so much for your time, Will. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here, brothers. So to start this off, oh, sorry about that. Uh, so to start this off, definitely just wanna ask the question, who are our current black leaders? And, okay. um, Yep, go for it. Uh, again, thank you, brothers, for having me on the panel. I'd like to answer that question actually with a quote from Martin Luther King from 1967 from a speech called The Black Power Defined. The majority of Negro political leaders do not ascend to prominence on the shoulders of mass support. Although general, generally popular leaders are now emerging, most are still selected by white leadership and ele elevated to positions supplied with resources and inevitably subjected to white control. 
the mass of Negroes nurtures a healthy suspicion towards this manufactured leader who spends little time in persuading them that he embodies personal integrity, commitment, and ability and offers few programs and less service. Tragically, he is in too, off, too many respects a fighter for, not, not a fighter for a new life, but a figurehead of the old one. This is Martin Luther King in 1967. That speech was basically given at a time in which 300 urban cities were going to be burned down to a crisp between 1967 and 71 during the urban rebellions that transformed the political reality of life for Black America. What came to pass after that, after the Black Power era elevated the Black Panther Party, the Republic of New Africa, and many other radical movements into the consciousness of the Black community is that in the Gary, Indiana Convention of 1972, there was a schism between traditional old guard established Black politicos and the radicals who came from the movement era of Black power as to the direction of where Black political leadership in the Black community, community, community should go. Because they had better access to resources, better connection to the ruling class, the traditional Black political class, like our brother Charlie Rangel, like the founders of the Congressional Black Caucus, like the many mayors that took over cities and municipalities all over the country, won that debate and became what we know at Black Agenda Report and those who are scholars of Black politics from a left, left perspective as the Black political class. The Black political class has been the steward of the affairs of Black America and majority Black municipalities over 50 years. What has been the consequence of their stewardship? Black homeownership rates are the same now as they were in 1968. Mass incarceration of poor and working class Blacks has gone up. And at one time during the Obama presidency, Black child poverty was as high as it's been since 1971. My argument is the problem with Black leadership is the fact that we believe we need a Black leader because the Black leadership paradigm comes out of the old guard Booker T. Wish Washington model. And he was a man who was elevated by the ruling class in the South to neutralize the Colored Farmers Alliance, which was an alliance of working class Black men aligning with working class white sharecroppers to challenge Southern capital and actually economically empower themselves to displace the rule of the Southern Bourbon society. That race management, management paradigm as Michael West calls in his book, The Education of Booker T. Washington, is the exact paradigm that the Black leader is dispatched to do. He manages the affairs of the Black 42 million who stay in silence as he basically implements the ruling class agenda from above and below to the, at the behest and the benefit of the ruling class, not the Black majority. So if you ask me who the Black leaders are of tomorrow, None of them who come in your face and tell you that they are a black leader should be trusted. And that's the first person you should say, I don't want to talk to you because I know where the black leadership hold takes us and where it's taken us in 50 years. What we need is that poor and working class black people who have been most betrayed by brothers like ourselves who are the top one in 10% who make up 75% of black wealth while the majority of blacks are twice as poor as whites. And we live in our nice little comfortable middle-class homes, go to Martha's Vineyard every summer while black kids get shot in the face regularly and beat down by cops and pretend to have racial kinship with these people. Well, I'm, I'm gonna jump in here because I, I feel I'm, like- I'm not finished yet. I know, but brother, sure. brother, brother, Robert, you got it. You got to let other brothers speak. It's we're we're already at twenty one minutes. Okay, brother Robert, I, I, I definitely agree with uh, brother Blackman on this one. We'll go around, definitely come back to you. Let me be clear. I'm one of those. Oh, brother Blackman, definitely. Yeah. Brother Jones, can you hear me? Okay, you're you're breaking up on my end. I don't know if it's my end or your end. Can other brothers hear me? Okay. Yeah, you're good, Brother Blackman. Brother Jones is, is, is okay. Thank you. So oh, let me let me wait, just no. say this. That's me. Okay. Yeah. Let me just say this. I'm one of these Negroes that goes to Martha's Vineyard. And I'm one of these Negroes that grew up in public housing. And I'm one of these Negroes that go back to public housing. My niece lives in public housing. And I think one of the things that we are all leaders. We are all leaders. Wilbur Davis is a leader. Why? Because if he drew a one mile radius 
with a compass from where he is, I'm sure that there aren't many brothers like Wilbur Davis around him. So it's incumbent upon him to help to change that neighborhood, right? So as one of those people who goes to Martha's Vineyard, as one of those people that walk the street when kids get shot, when they get beat, when they don't know who else to call, they pick up the phone and call me. As a brother that when our brothers in this illustrious fraternity have a problem when they do an event and it's not permitted and the police roll up, the leaders show up and say, leave them alone. Let me ask you, brother Blackman. Let me make this question. Oh, let me finish. My brother, I didn't interrupt you. Let me finish. Good. We are all leaders. That senior citizen who can't get Con Ed to respond and calls Michael Blake means that Michael Blake is somebody that will change that one senior citizen's life. So we need to stop looking at leadership from an economic standpoint perspective. Because my grandparents, who couldn't read or write past the fourth grade level, did well enough to see that I could. And because I worked and had people that helped me along the way, doesn't make me a villain of the progressive class or of those who had other struggles. I'm going to stop there. Can I address the point, please? My point wasn't directed at you, brother, but feel free. How many black political leaders do you think contributed to the worsening your condition living in that public housing when you were growing up? I think it was I think it was built by a white system, a system that was controlled by Caucasians. Excuse me. Hold on. That that built a system and built substandard housing and moved in an area where there wasn't political power. And if you take a look at the design of New York City and you see the way our neighborhoods were drawn, they were drawn in areas where we didn't have black political power, even when there were black elected officials there. And I, I want to hear from Michael Blake on this. Yes, I, I was going to say, can, can we have Michael Blake? Because yeah. I definitely want to get I, your I'm kind of to hear what, what, what he has to say. Yeah, I, I've been. Uh... Hi, brothers. <laughs> I, uh, I've, been, I've been sitting here uh, listening right now. Um, Well, when I started uh, this work in politics, I'm gonna address both of these questions. The core question that you started were, who are black, the leaders of black, in that question right there. Um, we all are leaders, let's start there, who do different things. I chose the path of politics because I believe that there is no industry that can help more people at scale than policy. From the moment you're born to the moment you're, you die, everything has some impact because of policy. Um, so to the question around housing or jobs or criminal justice, uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think it would make sense for us to have more people in the arena of politics than less. Um, in terms of the question around leaders, don't let your disappointment caused by a few to distract you of the impact of the greater majority. And we have been hurt for so long among our community, we start to tell ourselves, well, these leaders, quote unquote, let us down and failed us. Uh, probably it was the systems that failed you. To Brother Blackman's point, and, and I think it's important that we remember brothers, there is a difference between prejudice and racism. Prejudice, is something that all of us have in different ways where you can be discriminatory. Racism is when you institutionalize it in your system. And so when we talk about who lets you down and who can frustrate you, we need more leaders who will make change at scale. That's your question. Because you were asking initially around black leadership and who are our leaders. So if you are a black leader trying to change the game when it comes to business, I'm gonna rock with you like brother Hill Harper is doing with Black Wall Street. If you are a leader that's trying to change the game when it comes to what's going on in sports, like my line brother, Jason Wright with the Washington football team, I'm going to rock with you. You are a leader. If you want to change the game when it comes to what's happening uh, in the spaces of, of, of equity, uh, like brother Robert Smith, whose line brother is brother Louis Tobias, I'm going to rock with you. Maybe it's in politics and what I'm doing. Maybe it's what's happening in business and in politics, Larry Scott Blackman. But all of us have a form on that. But I will say this, and I'll stop here. Let us not get trapped with questions about who are our leaders, because it, it creates a false narrative. 
because it essentially starts making us say, well, one person is a leader versus who's not a leader. And it makes us start thinking about the people that are on camera all the time. You don't have to be on camera to be a leader. There's a lot of folks making things happen that you may not see. I say this all the time with the Democratic Party. Uh, I make the analogy around what the Golden State Warriors were a few years ago. They obviously won a lot of championships, but you didn't know who might have been the people that were the general manager and assistant general manager behind the scenes. And that person is just as critical than the person that was rocking on the court. So that's where we need to go as a people and focus on this moment that we're in. Rather than us getting distracted and trying to you know, have division, we are in a reparations moment, brothers and guests. We are in a moment right now where there are hundreds of millions of dollars going to our cities. And instead of us talking about everybody disrespecting us for the centuries before, I'd rather focus on what we're going to do in 2021. I like. I, I need to respond to this. Oh, before that, we do need to let Will go. Brother Jones and Brother Campana can keep us going. Yeah. If I can, if I can jump, if I could jump yeah. in real quick, and um, thank you for the question, Brother Jones. Um, and I think right now, when we look at the mainstream media and the America as a society today, there are people who are deemed black leaders who so-called represent us with. What I say with mainstream media contracts, some who are wealthy entertainers or business people, you have mentioned one, um, Brother Blake, and um, some who hold political office who work at, as Brother Pascal said, at the behest of the ruling class to push a capitalist agenda that does not benefit the majority of Black people and the majority of the American people. And the reason I, and I think there is a huge problem with having a select people who are deemed black leaders because we rely on the, um, them to handle the discourse and speak on behalf of the race. When in reality, those folks have more unity with the 1% who are the majority of wealth in America rather than the poor and working class who make up the majority of the race. A pure example is during this pandemic, while billionaires continue to increase their wealth and the lower bottom percentage, 99% of us continue to lose our wealth, lose our houses um, that are getting for, foreclosed on or will start getting foreclosed on um, after the CDC, d- d- who gets the determinist, deems it um, worthy now to foreclose, that have lost their jobs and now are now getting killed on the street, we see Black political leaders talk more about things that don't matter, like the arts, like um, painting the, the streets yellow and saying Black Lives Matter on there and calling that progress. So I think there is a problem with Black leadership. I think we should have that discussion and that, that, that's how we get to having a productive discussion on the future of Black leadership and what that looks like in America. I, I'd like to, can I address comments that were made, please? Yes, yes, please, Brother Robert. Brother Blake, by the way, let me be just clear, brothers. You know, Brother, Brother Blake and Brother Blackman, Fred Davis made me in 1987. I've been in this fraternity for almost 35 years. Brothers know me. I'm a very contentious brother. I'm a very passionate brother. But none of this is personal for me. Believe me. You know, I call I, brothers who pledge me. I call them fat back and biscuits, muffins when you have Negroes to their face. And Fred can attest to that. So I don't want you to feel that I'm antagonistic. <laughs> oh, listen, antagonistic. I'm not mad at that. I love fat back. So we can keep it. <laughs> You know, I wanted to say, brother Blake, brother Blake, I wanted to say something in response to what you said. You gave three examples of what you call quote unquote black leaders who are doing things in the black community. All three of those examples were black one percenters who are going to implement policy that's going to help people who are black one percenters. And the problem with the political agenda of the quote unquote black community, and I think the problem is that we believe we are one community when we are communities of different classes and different backgrounds, is that the agenda is set by a class of black people who set an agenda that benefits their class. The fact that we think that Barack Obama, who literally sat back and watched 35% of black wealth get evaporated while he was basically put in place by Robert Rubin, a Citibank executive, and basically made sure that the 1% was taken care of after they eviscerated this country with the subprime mortgage crisis, or Kamala Harris, who was Miss Capo Harris, who made sure that, you know, her job was taking care of, you know, black and brown families and children in San Francisco was done to the best of our ability is what we should look for as in black leaders. I, I hearken back to that Martin Luther King quote about being propped up by the white, white establishment and not promoting, promoting any new vision but being a caretaker of the old one. So Dr. King, as the prophetic voice he was, saw what was coming in 1967. And he was doing it at a time where black elected officials were already starting to take the, to take the helm. 
Now, I'm not saying that you brothers are the, should be the enemies, though I do believe some black on black class warfare will be quite, quite, quite good. I'll bring the machetes if you like. <laughs> but the point is that the larger point I'm trying to say is that there is a class, black politics is a class politics. And the class that co controls it is not the class of the majority of black people who are poor and working class. Let those people Brother, find, well, well, let those people work with people who are similarly situated, who are not controlled by the veil of racism and can, per, per, and, can and can pierce it and demand a political agenda that suits their needs, a federal jobs guarantee, a new deal 2.0, better union jobs, a $15 minimum wage, root their politics in their material condition and not in this charade of blackness that has got us all in this trap where we're literally fast fighting fascism on the rise. So let's so well, let's, yeah. let's pivot. So if let's can, let's pivot. Let's, Hold let's, on for let's, a second. Let's, let's let's transition to the next question. I'm sure we can I, I, I was yeah, I was I was gonna say, <laughs> but I, I also think that this is a good place to pivot. The agenda. So we could agree or disagree on black leadership. But I think we all could agree there needs to be an agenda. Yes, there needs to be a leader, and we could disagree on that, but there needs to be an agenda. And to your point, Brother Robert, there, there could be different agendas based on the class that you're in. So let's talk about that, because that is a fundamental problem as well that needs to be addressed. And how do we break those barriers? And what have other races done to break those, you know, that class system, that, 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 you know, that the thing that's really separating us, although we should be united? Let's talk about that because that's where we need, there's where our opportunities are to grow and move. I just, I brother, just, I, I appreciate you. you know, I appreciate your generosity. I just want to say, I can see the warmth in your spirit, brother Campania, and I celebrate that. And by the way, I have love and affection for all the brothers. Larry, you're my man. Your, your father's music took me to the 80s. I just want to let you know. So, <laughs> the, so this, this, you know, I don't want brothers to feel that there's anything. I'm a, I'm a very passionate oh, no, listen, brother. brother. Absolutely. Listen. We, we, we don't, we don't, but we're ready to, to answer. We don't, but we're ready to, to rock here. Uh, to, Let me tell you, this, this, this panel is much easier than it was growing up in the 80s uh, yeah. when you had a famous father, trust me. Um, I hate you. I imagine. I, 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 will, I will respectfully and vehemently disagree on the point that was made earlier about uh, the previous brothers are only helping the top one percent. I mean, that couldn't be the further from the truth. But so let me. But let me go to your question here. Um, we got again help at scale, right? So like, if a brother takes on a role that could lead to anywhere between one to two billion dollars being deployed to minority women-owned businesses in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, and primarily black businesses that have been uh, left behind, uh, that changes the game. Uh, when, and it's not just, you know, you know, black men, it's all of us. When Misha Ross Porter becomes the chancellor of DOE, uh, so that we can actually figure out how we're going to help our kids actually go to school, graduate school, that changes the game. Uh, I, I think again, we have been hurt for so long that we have spent the first 30 minutes talking about leadership disappointments. I'd rather talk about how we elevate our people and very practically, uh, when, when we're talking about politics, I, mean, I am going to talk about politics very directly because that's what I know best here, right? Like we have a, an election coming up in 13 days that is in New York City. Uh, that is the most transformative opportunity we've had in the city literally ever because of how many people will be changing positions. Mayor, comptroller, in which the comptroller has $250 billion of, of uh, pension assets that they'll receive. 35 city council races, four out of five borough president races, the district attorney's race, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I want to be real clear. Why am I talking about that? Because I, I don't understand why are we spending the time trying to negatively talk about leadership that we should be figuring out how we elect, support, and elevate so that they can help us as a people at scale. That's the reason why you put leaders in. You, you literally support leaders so they can help the masses. Right. Like, so How much we're, help we're did Obama give to the masses the broader point, like the, the, the premise of this. Uh, and then I'll, I'll say this final piece and then transition over to Larry Scott Blackman and Brother Davis, uh, as you could probably pick up from my cadence. I also preach. Uh, and so we, we, we can't be selective when we're talking about leadership. So uh, as a Christian, 
uh, we have so many examples of following leaders. We don't just randomly say, I'm just, I'm just hoping it's going to figure this out. Like Jesus, who was a dark man, skin of color, uh, a refugee who was homeless, who experienced poverty, uh, wasn't just that because he just spit some rhymes, right? He was that because he was seen as a leader that mobilized people, right? Like, Paul and Timothy didn't just randomly become that. They were leaders that mobilized at scale. We're not talking about Moses for some transformational way just because they just showed up. And so there is an intersectionality between leadership and impact at people at scale. So when you ask the question about what are we trying to do here and how do you change things and what is the agenda, we need to focus on the economic development that has to happen for us as a people. It is the reason why poverty is the topic that is discussed the most in the Bible. Check that anywhere that wants to source that. It is the reason why you got to talk about education K through 16, because just going by 12 is not sufficient. And it can't just be about four year institutions. You got to look at community colleges, and vocational schools. It's the reason why we got to change the systems. And I understand that we have been hurt by white privilege and racism and discrimination for centuries. But I am asking us, I am pleading us to stop spending the time trying to talk about why black folk are not doing things for black folk and actually help black folk to empower black folk. How, how, how much are we willing to recognize that black folk are open, often the agents of the destruction of black folk while they're getting promoted in the system? And what I will say in my 15 second response is I love and respect my brothers of Alpha, but there are some times when our brothers of Alpha are so fundamentally wrong on the points that they're saying that it is best to just transition to the next speaker. And I'm gonna jump in there because as someone who's been a career servant, uh, I could not think of anything else that was more completely, absurdly incorrect. What's in, what, what, that you don't think that, you don't think that black collaboration is necessary to facilitate the phenomenon of white, white supremacy? That was actually not your question as a Thank former you. journalist. Let's be clear. That is actually not, not what, what you, you said. said. <laughs> so, so, but you We can keep going right there. Now, here, let me just say this. I'm going to say a couple of things. We can't, um, or at least some of us don't, cherry pick what is apropos for our argument. Because on the one hand, if you're going to stick to Martin Luther King's quote about black leaders or certain black leaders being put in certain places by whites, then you can't also negate one of his most famous speeches right before he died, where he talked about the fact that white landowners, white farmers were giving land grants right. by a racist Congress that was used to prop them up. They use that to build generational wealth. And then when black people get to the point where we are just about to seek out a piece of the pie, we are told that we have to do it by ourselves. We are given a different message. If you take a look at the history of black people in this country, we could not move to certain neighborhoods. We could not access it. We couldn't swim in the same pool. Cases where black people swam in the same pool went to the United States Supreme Court. If you take a look at the history of housing in New York City, take a look at where even the George Washington Bridge is placed or the Cross Bronx Expressway, and you see the history of racism. And it is only now that some of us are only hard on black elected officials because some of us have a black complex. The fact of the matter is, that you align yourself with individuals, some of you align yourself with individuals that really couldn't care about even propping black elected officials up because that does not serve their best interest. It's about power and the holding of power. So the point I am going to say as someone who has dedicated their career and brother, Pasc brother Robert, I can say this to you, you are absolutely and completely wrong. Brother Blake knows this. And some of us, the work that we are doing is transformational, transformational, not to aid at the destruction of the black community, but to understand how the black community's political power has been siphoned away from it. And we've been conditioned to hate each other, even politically. Can I respond? Brother Davis, Brother, Will, Be, Brother yeah. Wilbur Davis, and then Brother Pascal. I mean, Brother, yes. Brother yes. Davis, then Brother Pascal, please. Just to answer your question, um, and first, I think with other groups, um, Brother Campania, I, th I think it's a good question, but to address the first part of it, I think that um, other groups have similar problems that also the Black community is facing. I don't think they have to 
solidarity with race. When you look at it, you see the upper wealthy um, rule on the bottom, the lower bottom um, half of that of that race as well. But um, if we're going to talk about Dr. King's one of his last speeches, he talks about the three evils of society, racism, excessive materialism and militarism. And when we talk about what should be on the black agenda, the what should be on the black agenda, there I would say five points that I have here. Um, poverty is one, like I said earlier, um, U.S. billionaires during the pandemic, their wealth grew 19 fold over over the last so 31 what, years. Will, so what? That is their pocket. That's not oh, yours. Oh, I didn't drop you down. I didn't drop you, 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 but I was being, come on. I know, but, but, but I'm just saying, I'm tired of hearing about somebody right. else's pocket. And I'll let the audience, I'll let the audience judge. <laughs> and would you rather be defending billionaires or would you rather be defending I'm not defending the billionaires. Working? You I'm said, not so what? I'm not, no. And, I, I I know. and, and what I'm saying, is, the, what I'm saying is the context, uh, the context of the fact of the matter is that while you are spending precious seconds talking about what someone else is doing, we are not coming up with solutions to empower okay. our so own. So here's my solution there. with that. Here's my solution to that. I would say tax billionaires so billionaires don't exist. That will be my solution. And that will help the black community more than empowering black businesses where you see that the majority of black people do not benefit from that. Like but, Brother but, Pascal. But can, but can I just ask one thing to Brother Davis to that point? So Go ahead, brother. I just want to make sure I grasp this here. Mm -hmm. Why would we want to create a scenario so that billionaires don't exist? Because when we are seeing that wealth consciously spent out can help people like that would essentially so let's go back to brother smith so we agree with that mm -hmm. i'm sorry we agree with that right but, but, we agree. Uh, well, but we don't i just want to be clear because you actually just said to create a system well so in whose hands exist. wealth in whose hands right the private sector or the state oh i mean like when brother smith went down to morehouse and told everyone that their tuition was that was before he also after went he got, to wait, wait, was that before or after he got busted being a facilitator for a right. tax scam for a tax I, I, right. I, I think I think um, the joy of what's happening here is there's pain that I get it. Black folk, brother, there's no pain here. This but, is a brother, 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 brother Robert. No pain here, brother Robert. I, I, I think, know we have shysty black politicians. This no, this is not a shock to working class black people. And, 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 I, and where, where so I would I, like I, to I would like to interject here. Just let me get this because I've I've waited on this for for a few moments. That's the fourth time I've heard you talk about shady politicians. And as a brother, it's really starting to unnerve me. I bust, hold on, bust my ass to help people. And for those of us who literally give up our lives to help people, what you're referring to are maybe the 1% of people who make mistakes. But for those of us, like myself, who created the My Brother's Keeper program here in New York State, or when we worked on Raise the Age, or changed the law so that minority women business got paid in 15 days instead of 30 days. The rhetoric that is happening right now is the reason why people don't want to trust leaders, because we're talking through- No, they don't want to trust black leaders, and they shouldn't, because and, what and, they protect their own- Let's take it to the top. And, 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 and I think the- Let's take it to the top. No, no, I want to address this. I think the premise to the top. Let's talk about the, the epitome of black political achievement so, in most people's mind, the President Barack Obama. It, Let's talk about the epitome- it, 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 we, and, so let me, so I'm brother, going to, brother, brother, brother Robert, as, let's as go in someone, order. So Blake, I, your thought, thank you. Just let me finish my thought. Because so, I, I, again, I heard the part about Obama, and then we can go back to the question. As someone who um, went to Iowa, <laughs> as I did, uh, to organize consistency outreach, to say that Barack Obama, who made sure that the Affordable Care Act, which presidents had tried for 70 years, couldn't get done, um, changed crack versus powder cocaine from 100 to 1 to 18 to 1, uh, bring expanded bring funding for the HBCU initiative that didn't exist before, changed student loan uh, funding so that if you did public service, you could have it eliminated in 10 years. But again, let's not let's not worry about all those things at scale that help black no, people. I, I want to address we'll, 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 every we'll, single we'll, point. I got a response so for everyone. We don't need that let's, because, let's again, the point. premise I, of this. Robert, 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 I think we've had a discussion on the record of the... Let him finish his thought, and then you you have the floor. But brother Blake, has brother Blake, I do want to say Blake, that will not one more finish. Minute and then brother Robert, please. Uh, oh, I, I, I'm I'm actually 
I was trying to make the final 30 second here of the premise ahead, of this was the future of black leadership. And the problem that we are having, brothers, is that we're spending so much time talking about what a small number of people did to disappoint us that we're not talking about how we're training the next generation of leaders. And if we keep doing this, we lose as a people. I would rather us spend the time talking about how are we developing the young ones that are coming up after us? Well, how are we spending the time in New York and New Jersey realizing that there are black and brown kids being shot and killed every single day? That when people are talking about crime being a number one issue in polling, it's not just about crime because at that point, the cops are showing up after the crime has happened. We are spending so much time, when I talk about pain, we're talking right now about how we've been disappointed, which I respect, I receive, and I acknowledge. But brothers of Alpha, the jewels would be embarrassed by what is happening right now by us spending so much time talking about what has happened in the past. Let us focus in on how do we develop the next generation of leaders. And that's why I'm grateful that you invited us to this conversation today. Can, may, I, may I respond? Yeah, Brother Robert, can you please close? And then we'll, we'll go to closing remarks after. My closing is this. Let us look at the example since we're all present about Black leaders. What was the result of the, the high point of political aspiration for Black America? The first Black president who literally, as was exposed by WikiLeaks, had his whole first term cabinet picked by Citibank executive who was actually working in Citibank when he picked Obama's cap, 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 cap cabinet. The man's name was Michael Frobin. Barack Obama had been in the tank consulting with Robert Rubin, the most nefarious treasury secretary we've had in this country, who basically orchestrated the rules that got us the 2008 crash since at least 2006 before and before, because Froman, who went to law school with Obama, introduced him to Rubin's brother, early on in his political career, even before he was a senator in Chicago. This man, Barack Obama, that we're supposed to quote unquote praise, was literally a blackface Trojan horse for Wall Street and finance capital. If you want to take a look at a video of a piece I wrote called Barack Obama's Wall Street's Perfect Man Manchurian Candidate, when in 2006, before he even announced that he was running for president, he's giving a speech at the Hamilton Group in front of Robert Rubin saying, yes, we all agree with markets. You guys are wonderful. And he's talking in front of the guys who orchestrated the rules that caused the crash, that he bankrolled and gave, guess, guess who got a lion's share of that bankroll? Citigroup. All right. So we can talk about the fact that Barack Obama changed the plus low scheme to help bank, bank, bankrupt historically black colleges and universities. Ask the presidents of HBCUs, as one of my fraternity brothers who works with them, what they think about Obama. All right. We can talk so, about the fact that 35 percent of black wealth was evaporated in the more subprime mortgage crisis with no recourse by Obama except a cruddy um, uh, home, home referral program that did nothing for poor and working class black people. Did the crisis about, begin? I'm not finished yet. No, I'm, I'm asking the question. I have a I'm question. I'm not finished so, yet. I have a question. Uh, Brother Robert, so, Brother Robert, let him no, ask no, 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 his question. No, no, no. I'm we not, need to move forward. So I, I actually... Future black leadership, right? This is about future, future black leadership. leadership. I want to sum it up quick. So, future I, black leadership. Back, Brother black Robert. Leadership. Let me say, I'm giving you my response. The future of black I have leadership... A, I have a question that would... Like, I think my question will go to this, and it will be for everybody for the closing remarks. So I think it it will be best if I just ask it. Uh, so in your closing remarks, can you please address succession plans for black leadership? And in lieu, not in lieu, uh, with the succession plan, how do we hold them accountable? Uh, we've had a lot of back and forth today about the future, the past, the, the bad, the good. I think that we can be straightforward in figuring out what do you believe we need to do to hold our black leaders who are businessmen, political officials, accountable. So succession plans and accountability. May I can, okay. and can, and can we, can we, can, and we're gonna go in order. We're gonna start with brother, brother Robert, then yes. brother Blackman, then brother Blake, then brother Davis. You're each gonna have two minutes. And, I, and when I start waving, that's gonna give you your 30 seconds, okay? Can we switch the order? I mean, we've been going in that order for quite okay. some time. No, 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 no. It's oh, fine. Oh, right. I'm fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Brother Robert, be the first. I think right. that 
the answer for the conditions of what black people should do in terms of their leadership is that it will be refreshing if black people chose their leaders. And I think they should choose leaders that reflect the politics that reflect their material interests. So that means that if you want to say that we're choosing XYX member of XYX caucus because he he suggests material policies that address working class black people's needs is pro-union, is pro-federal jobs guarantee, is pro-increase from $15 minimum wage, is pro-health, national health care. If he's, he's even in favor of those things that will help poor and working class Black people, they should support him. And they should make coalition agenda so they can neutralize the need on one solo Black leader. Have material politics based on your material interests, not the color of your skin, and don't let your color of your skin back up supporting someone who will not do anything for you. That is what I would say is the future, what needs to be the future of black leadership. Thank you, Brother Robert. Brother Blackman. So th these, this is my closing statement, correct? That is correct, you have two minutes. All right, fantastic. I wanna thank the brothers of Alpha Alpha Lambda for this opportunity, uh, for this lively discussion. Um, I think you all are very, very, very um, intelligent because you knew what you were going to get when you put this panel together. So I don't like you for that. And uh, I will have a conversation with your district director about proper sanctions being held against the chapter for this. Uh, let me just say that, um, you know, I'm disappointed to be quite frank, I'm disappointed, but I understand that no house can be built with, uh, you know, uh, homogeneous tools. So I know that there's diversity of thought and I know that sometimes diversity of thought is needed. But I'm gonna say this, that there's a difference between, you know, there are brothers of Alpha that are out here fighting the fight every single day. There are brothers that we have that work in healthcare that are out here trying to save lives of everyone, black, brown, white, or indifferent. Some of those brothers were inspired probably by seeing a black man assume the mantle of president of the United States when they didn't see that for their entire lives. I saw my grandparents cry when Barack Obama was elected. My grandparents, again, my grandfather couldn't read or write past the third grade education. I saw that man break down when Barack Obama was president and he died. I get it. We're going to go over tonight, though. Just by a little bit, you know. Okay. What I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm fighting some some things. We, we I, I deserve some time. Get it out, brother. Get it out. So what I'm saying is that for the Michael Blakes of the world, for the Dr. Torian East Easterlings of the world, for um, some of the, the the Clement Jameses of the world who work to get thousands of people vaccinated, and then there's some brothers that don't do anything but pontificate and talk and spew ideology. It is, a, it is an insult to some of us to be attacked for ideological differences. The kids on this corner on my block that shoot at each other don't care about black politicians. They don't vote. Their issues are deeper and they ain't blaming black politicians. So if y'all wanna come out and have a conversation with them, they're not on this level, right? So we need to think about that. But guess what they see? They see Barack Obama and they say, damn, we can do that. Because that's their, their level, is a visual level. Now you may disagree with that, but I challenge any of you to come take off your ties and walk these streets with me. You'll get a different perspective on your politics. It's not income-based, it's reality-based. So what I'm going to say is to the guests out there that, that view this, thank you. Not every public servant is um, negative or a crook or a thief. Not all of us believe that we should take money from billionaires and redistribute it. There's some of us that have more moderate views, but the passion on both sides of politics in the world today, unfortunately, has created more division than it has bringing together for the benefit of our community. And I thank you for my time. Thank you, Brother Blackman. Brother Blake. Uh, to my dear brothers of Alpha Alpha Lamb, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, 
uh, and for the space to, to be with you as we talk about the future of black leadership. Look, I, I'll go back uh, and to my fellow panelists and of course to the moderators, uh, great job. Uh, uh, and, and I hope you pour yourself a glass of bourbon uh, after this uh, here. The, um, uh, we're in a generational moment uh, and, and we need to stay focused on that. Uh, we are in the 100th anniversary of Greenwood and what happened in Tulsa. Uh, and and if, if we don't realize the opportunity that we have in these cities and states, we're missing it. Uh, so number one, identify at least one to two young cats uh, that you will say, I'm going to consistently mentor them. Because again, to the theme of this conversation, future, future Black leadership, consistently mentor that young cat along the way. Number two, find that issue at scale that you want to change. You know, for me, uh, it's economic justice, and I do that through politics. Because right? uh, again, if we're serious about the future of black leadership, we got to do that. And then third and finally, uh, I would hope um, as the uh, politician here uh, who had the honor of working in the White House with President Obama, who had the honor of being elected official, who had the honor of being the first black man to be a national officer for the DNC since Ron Brown, um, lives are changed for the better when you elect the right people. And, and so when you talk about the future of black leadership, uh, I am going to use this moment to say, uh, regardless of what's happening in, in the respective cities, and these are my, this is my final point, brother. Um, we have three black candidates running for mayor of New York City. There is no reason at all we do not end this thing with a black mayor. You want to talk about the future of black leadership? You want to change things at scale? You have a black man and Brian Benjamin running for comptroller who can oversee $250 billion of pension. There is no reason why Brian Benjamin did not run the, win this race. You want to change things at scale to your topic, have the right leaders, and especially in politics, be in those positions. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Blake. Brother Wilbur Davis, please close us. Thank you, Brother Capan. Um, first off, I like to say I wish we would have had a more productive um, conversation. I think these are the type of things that um, need to be discussed. And I think brothers on all sides shouldn't take things as personal as, as they did. But when we talk about mentoring, find that one person, find that two mentoring. And I know LSB, you mentioned people on the streets working the same over here as well. Um, when I look at a couple of kids that I mentor in the city of Newark, and I talk about what is on the agenda for black, I was trying to get it and I got interrupted about poverty. You see poverty at a high level. When you talk about healthcare, you see that they can't visit the doctor or go to the dentist, right? And I was gonna get into why that is in today's talk, but I couldn't get into that part, right? When you talk about, and it's not just about access to health cares I'm also about affordability when we're talking about it. when we talk about affordable housing these are the things when you say that younger kids aren't interested in politics it's because of these types of conversations when they when they mention that and say how do how can we get it and how do we pay for it and they tell you how they pay for it you say well why are you so for taxing billionaires why are you so for and this is the reason why so those things can happen i understand we, we have a system where things you need to be able to pay for, you say, okay. And when we lay out that plan, when young, when the young black Americans lay out that plan with those issues, you either take it personal, you give example, individual examples and not a society, which we're talking about more of a societal problem as well. And the conversation ends with nobody getting their point through. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I wish, again, this conversation would have um, been more productive, that we could have actually talked more about the um, Black agenda. But I'd like to appreciate everybody for coming on, uh, the audience, um, my pops, brother VP Davis, brother Old, um, President Oladapo, and the chapter for inviting us. Thank you, brother Campania, brother Jones, for moderating, having a tough time doing it. But I appreciate you, brothers. I appreciate you, brother Robert, brother Blake, brother LSB, for being on the panel. I would I I first uh, you know before before we close off and I, I know we're we're a little bit over I first obviously I want to thank the, the chapter president vice president obviously all the panelists 
You guys have been wonderful. This has been, honestly, this has been a blast for me. Um, and the reason it's been a blast for me is because we can't agree. And that's exactly what we need to be doing. We can't agree. We need to have these discussions. I actually think this was very fruitful and this was very beneficial because what it did, it offered so many different perspectives. We have to learn from each other. We're all alpha men, we're all professional, we're all good at what we do. But the one thing that we are all different, we all have different perspectives. And it's our jobs to figure out a way to find something in common outside of us being black men that we can rally behind to go forward. So this session, which was the first, but I'm sure of many, is where we're gonna talk about what we can't get along with and try to find something that we can get along with so then we could all drive. Because there was a truth in everything that was said. Maybe not all of it was true, but there was truth in everything that was said. So let's, let's learn from that. More importantly, let's build from that. Brother Jones. Thank you so much. And before we hand it to the president and VP, I definitely wanna thank all of the panelists. Uh, the discussion was lively uh, and it, I was right to be excited. I definitely would love this forum to be two, three hours long and just go at it so that we can find those, those, those things that we can move forward on that Brother Companion was talking about. So thank you again. Thank you to the audience for watching. And welcome to Brotherhood Week. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, good brothers. Uh, Brother Olodapo, uh, President Olodapo, are you on? I want to see if he is. I know he, he had to catch a flight, so he may not be on. So let me end it this way. Uh, thank you, all good brothers, who participate on this panel. Uh, as Brother Jones said, this is the kickoff of our Brotherhood Week for the Alpha Alpha Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, we knew the second panel would be some fireworks, and it was. Um, we know that we couldn't get it all done here, and we know that it, it eventually we'll have future discussions on this topic and other topics that are meaningful for our community, and that's what it's really all about. I do want to, before we leave, read the uh, Alpha Phi Alpha mission statement, which is... Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated develops leaders, promotes brotherhood and academic e excellence while providing service and advocacy for our communities. And this is what it's about. And I'm glad we heard so many different sides of the coin. Uh, we'll try to get it a little better flowing the, the next time. Uh, but again, thank you, Brother Jones. Thank you, Brother Campagna for uh, leading this discussion. Thank you, Brother Robert. Um, you know, we go back a long way, good brother, and I knew what, what you were going to bring, and I appreciate what you brought to, tonight. Thank you, brother Blake. Uh, you, you've always been a great brother, and I really appreciate you, and you've been supportive of, of this chapter. Brother Blackman, what can I say? You, you, I mean, well, you're, not, you're, you're the uh, Eastern Regional Brother of the Year, so, so, we, so I knew you're going to bring what you were going to bring today, and you, you're involved in so many things, and you um, the, the work that you do in the community is just second to none. So thank you, good brother. Um, brother Will Davis, uh, hey, I have to hear you every day, every morning, every afternoon, and every night. <laughs> so I knew what you were going to uh, say today. Behind the scenes, I have to uh, thank uh, Brother Nichols for your great work and making sure the stream was going and, and, and we were uh, great today. Uh, brother Dr. Gray, thank you again for all the work that you did behind the scenes and, and thank you, uh, brother Jordan Lester as well. So thank you all, uh, have a great night. God bless and we'll see you the next time. Oh, six, good right, brother. Oh, six, brothers. Oh, six.